Okay, traders, that is 1 p.m. GMT, and we are about to get started with this week's live market and trade analysis session with me, Patrick Munnerly. Before we get going, as always, we want to adhere to the risk disclaimer. Most pertinent to today's presentation is the fact that the views and opinions expressed by me are solely mine. They are not indicative or representative of those held by Tick Mill UK or Tick Mill Europe Limited. So for those of you here for the first time, a brief introduction to myself. As I say, my name is Patrick Munley, and after I graduated from university, I joined a city PLC consulting firm. I left with some colleagues and went on to successfully co-found and exit a consulting startup, which was focused on C-suite executive search for technology businesses. Essentially, I had a front row seat to the dot-com bubble, witnessing people make and lose a fortune in the market, sometimes quite literally overnight. So I decided to explore my curiosity for markets with some capital to play with and some time on my hands. I started day trading the S&P 500, or probably more appropriately at that stage, day gambling. And after some early beginner's luck, I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, the beginner's luck ran out. And as the market phase changed, I began to average down into losing positions, giving back all my gains, and ultimately experiencing a significant six-figure hit to my personal capital. To say this was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. So I really had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the market. So I decided to get serious about trading, and I sought out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period of 18 months was a time during which I upped not just my technical game in terms of researching, developing extensively back and forward testing strategies that crucially suited my personality, and all of which were most importantly underpinned by a rigorous risk management strategy. But most importantly, during the period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. And probably most importantly of all, I made the watershed shift from being a highly goal-orientated individual focused on financial gains to becoming purely process-orientated. So what does that actually mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and you have a professional trading mindset and you accept and understand the true nature of trading, simply being a numbers game in which you're playing the probabilities, you lose that emotional investment and that hellish emotional roller coaster ride of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. So I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of an individual trades or even a small string of trades. My focus is on the next 100 trades, because I know if I focus on excellence and execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. And since 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through a managed account service, again, delivering annual positive returns. I'm currently responsible for managing a multi-million dollar portfolio. And since 2010, I've mentored hundreds of private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders, in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. In addition to my fund management and mentoring, I'm also resident market expert, exclusively providing market and trade analysis to Tickmill clients. I provide an in-depth daily market outlook. I break down the fundamental and technical drivers for the trading day ahead. I also provide daily technical trade setup videos for about two or three markets that I'm actively tracking for the trading day ahead. And I share those through the Tickmill Trading View account. So I'll post a link for that, that account at the, uh, at the end of today's presentation. I also run Tickmill's rapidly growing e-mini strategy group where I post a, a daily trade plan Outlining my pre-market thoughts for the cash trading session in New York, I give my bias for the day ahead and specific action areas and trade levels where I'm looking to engage the market. These pre-market plans have offered over 7,500 points of profit since we launched the group in April 21. 
The second tick mill strategy group I run is for traders who really want to take their trading to the next level. The tick mill futures telegram group is a real time environment where on a daily basis, I share in-depth insights, analysis, and real time trades. I also provide live commentary during the opening hour of the cash trading session in New York, where traders can essentially see in real time how I dissect the markets and how I identify asymmetric trading opportunities. These sessions act as a platform, helping traders to develop a professional, consistent approach to navigating the markets and those mental mind games that must be mastered to make it as a profitable market operator. Okay, so that gives you a flavor of where it is I'm coming from. Uh, let's jump into today's material. I would say if you have any questions um, during today's presentation, or um, with specifically to any of the charts I cover, or it trading uh, questions in general, I would ask that you just drop those into the chat box. And at the end of the presentation, I will come back to them and cover off any questions that are posted there. Equally, if you uh, have an instrument that you're interested in that I don't cover in my presentation, you're welcome to drop that into the chat box as well. And I'll give you a view on the charts at, uh, at the end of the presentation. So let's jump into the charts for this week. And we are starting, as always, with the S&P 500. I use the E-mini futures contract, trades at a spread from the spot contract. Currently, I think the spread is about uh, five points, is it? Let's see. Let me just take a look and I'll give you the exact spread. So, yeah, the, the spot market is trading 39.38 and we're trading 39.43 in the future. So it's about five points difference if you're looking to uh, assimilate these levels to the cash market. But I, like I say, use the futures market. And so what we've been tracking over the, uh, the past few weeks is a corrective sequence. And what I'm looking for now is one more uh, one more low here. Ideally, I'd like to see us push up today into the 39.65, 39.70 area. From there, intraday, I'd be looking for bearish reversal patterns to engage on the short side. And what I'm ultimately looking for is a test down towards this 3,900 level. And from this 3,900 level, I'm looking to uh, I'm looking for bullish reversal patterns. Importantly, and for those that uh, that are here on a weekly basis, you'll know this, but it's good to uh, just go over it. I'm always keen to identify uh, momentum divergence. So when I'm looking to enter a trade against the current dominant trend, and obviously when I talk about trends, the reality is trends exist on timeframes. You know, you, you can have an extremely bullish one minute chart and you can have an extremely bearish 15 minute chart. So don't get caught up in the idea about, you know, trading against the trend, et cetera. What I'm, uh, what I'm ultimately looking for on the time frame I'm trading is some momentum divergence. So if I'm looking to play a move that is counter to the current trend in the market, what I want to see is a loss of momentum, i.e. it's taking more effort for in this instance, for, from the sellers to make new lows uh, than it has done in terms of price making previous lows. So that for me on the charts is identified as, as divergence with the uh, the momentum indicator I use, which is a, called a psych indicator. It is essentially just an enhanced version of the RSI. So no voodoo or uh, holy grail here. It is, it is just a, a slightly tweaked version of the RSI. I also have it colored. It gives me a better visual straight away I can pick up. What, where I see uh, momentum. So at this stage, like I say, any move into this 39.65, 39.70 area, I'm looking for bearish reversal patterns. I want to see one more low down into this 39.10, 3,900 area. And then from there, I'm looking to engage on the long side. Now, when I say I'm looking to engage on the long side, I'm not necessarily talking about uh, holding a position for uh, days or weeks. I'm I'm generally when I use these intraday four hour time frames, and I personally when I'm trading the E mini S and P, I'm using much lower time frames intraday. But I'm looking for a move essentially that will first and foremost test what I call or what is termed the high volume node. And what the high volume node simply refers to is over the uh, the period, the time period we're looking at here. So we're talking about uh, the beginning of December 22, obviously up now until uh, the beginning of March here. So over this time period, the highest amount of volume has traded at this price. That's 39.91. So when I engage on the long side, my immediate target for the trade is going to be a essentially a reversion 
back into that high volume node. That's the first target. The second target is going to be this pitchfork. Uh, you can see I've overlaid a uh, an pitchfork here versus the current swing structure that we've got. So that would take us into the 4,000 level. So that for this trade, for this setup that I'm, I'm tracking at the moment, that's what I'm looking for. So that's uh, and obviously, if we don't if we don't find buyers here at the uh, at the thirty nine hundred level, then I'm certainly going to be starting to think about the idea that we're going to extend further to the downside, and we're going to be retesting the key support area back into the thirty seven eighty eight. But for now, thirty nine hundred is where I'm interested in establishing long positions. Thirty nine sixty five, thirty nine seventy is where I'm interested in establishing in intraday short positions, looking for that uh, downside target. So let's move out to, and I would just for again for those that are here for the first time, on the weekly time frame, I'm tracking this setup here. So I use what I refer to as a quality objective. So it's uh, the in Elliott wave terms, it's either the ABC structure or the WXY structure. But essentially, what I'm looking for is price to move in equal legs, and that's going to give us a target to the upside of 4465. So that's my long term target. Whilst we hold support at that 3790s, just to uh, just to let you know what I'm thinking about long term. Moving to the NASDAQ, <clears throat> similar idea really to the uh, the S&P. This is, I, I posted this uh, this chart earlier in the week. This was the setup I was looking for on Monday. I was looking for a rejection at the pivot and I moved down into tests or equality objective, 11,865. We've got that test, little four hour pin bar reversal there. <clears throat> got some momentum divergence. So what I'm looking for now will be uh, let me just remove that. I'll show you the setup I would look for here in terms of establishing longs. So what I'd want to see here is a close through that little, uh, this internal channel here. So any close now on a four hour basis through 11,900, I'm going to look to engage on the long side. And as with the S&P, my first target is going to be what I imagine uh, would be a three wave initially a three wave corrected move you've got to think all trends or all Im impulse moves start as corrections and we would be targeting initially that weekly pivot there and the high volume load back into 12106 from there then we'll see if uh, if buy side momentum really does kick in and we are uh, the correction is complete and then we'd be looking to target the uh, the trend channel uh, resistance is corrective channel that we've been in. So back up to 12,600 will be the next objective. But by the, obviously, by the time we get into this high volume node, I certainly want the trade to be risk free, take the risk off the table and uh, and trade for that upside objective. Moving to the Dow Jones. The Dow has, uh, has a structure here posted this chart as well at the beginning of the week. I'm looking for another low in terms of the Dow. This these, this drawing um, that you can see here on the chart, This I posted this on Monday, and you can see we've tracked it pretty well um, so far this week. I'm looking for one more push to the downside. The target area for me is this equality objective. Again, when I'm talking about equality, all I'm simply referencing is this swing versus this high into this low. So it's equal legs. So we're looking for a test of 32,000, just above 32,000. And obviously what we're paying attention to is we want to see as price makes that new low, we don't want to see a new low in terms of the momentum study. As long as that setup is maintained, we watch for bullish reversal patterns there. Initially, we would look for a test of the corrective trend channel resistance, which would take us back up into 32,000. Uh, 665. So again, you know, you look, you're talking there about 600 points on a four hour chart. Certainly the trade is going to be risk free by then. And then we'll see if this corrective structure is complete. You can see I've drawn it here on the weekly time frame, uh, a little bit clearer. Let me just blow that up for you and you can see actually exactly what we're looking at. <clears throat> so this is the impulse leg. This is the correction ABC 32,000. And then we're looking for that upside extension and uh, the Higher time frame target will actually be up into this trend channel resistance coming in 34,430s. But we don't get it carried away. We don't, we, we're taking it step by step. Uh, so, you know, if we're entering a trade on the four hour time frame, we're identifying those four hour targets, but we've always got in the back of our mind those higher time frame objectives as well. Let's move to the DAX. <clears throat> 
Oh, wait a minute, just take a sip of water here. Okay, so the DAX, <clears throat> again, we've been tracking this corrective move and uh, this this drawing is from a, a couple of weeks ago. I didn't do a session last week, I was off, uh, offline, but you can see we traded into this support zone. So what I'm looking for now is the DAX to extend to the upside. We're looking for a test of 16,000. Now what I would state here and <clears throat> something to pay attention to is the weekly trend and when I talk about the trend, these candles are colored uh, versus a five period look, look back of a volume weighted average price. And so this is a, the five period look back on the weekly time frame has actually turned bearish. So we want to pay attention to that. This We got that bearish rejection candle last week, and now we've got this inside potential pin bar developing. So if we don't find support here above the 15,000 level, there is the potential that we're going to roll over here and uh, and see a deeper corrective pullback. But for now, we're watching for bullish reversal patterns into this support zone for an extension to the upside to test the 16,000 level. Moving to the Euro stocks 50. This is another one that's been on a, a tear. You can see this was the drawing from a couple of weeks ago, and we haven't quite met our corrective objective. Let me just remove that for now and bring in the trend based FIB extension tool, and we'll get a target for this correction. And we'll see if buyers are going to step in. So <clears throat> we're looking for a test of 41.36 on the downside, which would uh, complete the correction. I'd anticipate at this stage we're looking at a WXY scenario. So we'd look for a three wave here in this uh, Y wave of the complex correction. I don't want to get too bogged down in the technical terms here. But ostensibly, we're looking for a test of 41.36. From there, we're going to see if buyers step in and bullish reversal patterns, and we would engage on the long side, looking for the next leg to the upside, 42, uh, 43.80s would be the target there. We have a 45.11 on the weekly, which is the equality objective, so we want to keep that one in mind. So any move into this 41.36 area, watching for bullish reversal patterns, and we're looking to engage on the long side. CAC 40. <clears throat> Cap 40 is the, uh, the other European index that have been tracking the FTSE in terms of uh, making all-time highs, and uh, we have a target for the CAC here, 75.50s versus this swing low at the 63.30. So let's see if we have an entry into this trade. Uh, I'm going to remove the drawings for now, and we again, we're going to use the trend-based FIB extension tool to give us a target. <clears throat> 71.20s, which coincides with weekly projected range support that's uh, identified by this yellow line. So we are looking for a three wave here into this 7120s. From there, we're watching for bullish reversal patterns and we want to engage on the long side. Certainly then we think about a test up into the purple line. The purple line represents monthly projected range uh, resistance at this stage. So 7493s, uh, obviously, by that stage, the trade would be risk-free. Any pullbacks then back into these highs should find support for an extension then up into our higher time frame target, 75.50s. FTSE. This one had, uh, had been on a tear. This was the drawing from a couple of weeks ago. Didn't get uh, didn't get that upside extension. <clears throat> Again, with uh, as with all these things, and, and certainly in trading, not everything works 100% of the time, guys. And so don't... Uh, <laughs> don't get disheartened if uh, if some of these uh, these trades don't play out. Um, what you're looking for ultimately is um, anything from forty to sixty percent, and as long as your risk or reward ratio is correct, you'll come out on top over time. So we are looking for an extension to the upside in terms of the FTSE. Let's get ourselves the channel here now. <clears throat> so this is the channel off the current highs. What I refer to as the corrective channel, and uh, and on the daily here, you can see we've got a nice re we've got a reversal pattern yesterday. And what we're potentially putting in here is an inside uh, bullish pin bar, and so if we can get a move back through seventy nine fifties, let's say seventy nine sixty on a closing basis, I'm going to engage on the long side, and I'm targeting uh, the next leg to the upside is the equality objective which will have us trading 8194s. So if we can get that close through the 7960, we're going to engage on the long side, targeting move up into 
our equality objective just shy of 8200 on the FTSE. Let's move to the nifty here. <clears throat> Uh, Nifty, I am now looking for a test of the, let's just extend this over here so you guys can see it. So this is our equality objective. We have 17,218. We also have our 78.6% retracement of this last impulse leg, so that five wave sequence. This is a complex correction at the moment. That's all we know, though. That's the tradable information at this stage. So what I look for now is a pullback into this support zone. We watch for bullish reversal patterns here to engage on the long side. First and foremost, we look for the high volume node, then the trend channel resistance, look for a break there, and then we can start to think about the next leg to the upside in terms of the nifty. Obviously, any close through that uh, 17,200 level would be a bearish development. And we think about a retest of the pivot there, the swing low back down into uh, 16,783. But for now, we're going to use this as a corrective sequence versus this clear five wave impulse. And we will look to establish longs into the 17,200 area. Uh, let's move this forward into the FX domain as we uh, as we're kicking on in time here. So dollar index, as uh, as those were here la well, the week before last, I'm looking for 105.57. I've been long the dollar. This has been a great trade, um, but I'm looking for 105.57. I'm looking for momentum divergence to be maintained. So we test that. 105.57 area, bearish reversal patterns there, no new high momentum, and I'm going to be engaging on the short side. And certainly we think about first test high volume node, 103.89, and then the projected trend channel support, weekly projected range support, <coughs> 103.50s. Obviously, any close through 105.57. I would use the daily close for this one. But if we get any close through there, our next upside objective is going to be 106.50s. Moving to the euro dollar. <clears throat> euro dollar, we are looking for a new low in terms of the euro dollar. 104.30s is our target. So that would complete this corrective sequence, the equality objective. From there, I'd be looking for bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side. And we would look for the next leg to develop to the upside. Certainly, we look for a retest the price cycle highs and then on potentially two new highs in terms of the euro. Sterling, a similar type of setup here versus this swing high here. We have an equality objective, 117.80s. And again, from there, bullish reversal patterns. And I'm going to engage on the long side. That should broadly co co uh, coalesce with the idea of sh shorting uh, shorting the dollar index above that 105.50 area. And then we are looking for a test into weekly trend channel resistance, 126.80s in terms of sterling. Dollar yen coming close to our target zone here, 137.20s. We do have momentum divergence in play here. So as price is making new high, you can see this almost in real time. We are watching for rejection here from 137.20s. As long as we don't get new high momentum, I'm going to be looking for bearish reversal patterns there to engage on the short side. First stop is going to move back in to test those prior highs, 134.60s in terms of dollar yen for a trade. The Aussie couple of areas of interest here i want to watch for bearish reversal patterns at 68 tens i'd be a seller there and i'd look to take it down into our target zone which is 66 uh, 34s from there watch for bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side again this would this is based around this idea that the, the dollar index is topping out and then we get the move up into our first target the high volume node 69 uh, kiwi Slightly more bullish sequence in the Kiwi here. We can see I've tracked a potential five wave here. So any move up into the 6290s, watch for a fade there back into test support, 6190s. Again, I'd be a buyer there if we get bullish reversal patterns. First target is going to be the pivot there at 6380s for a trade. Gold. Similar type of setup there to the Antipodeans, obviously. Uh, we watch for push into 18, uh, 1850s. Three wave correction back into 1820s. I want to be a buyer there. If we get bullish reversal patterns on the four hour time frame, first stop is going to be 1880 and then up to 1890 for a trade. Uh, let's check in with Bitcoin. 
Bitcoin, I'm looking for a test of the 21,500 area. From there, I'm watching for bullish reversal patterns. I think that is a great entry then to get a test up into the yearly pivot, which would see us trading just shy of 27,000 there. So this one has great risk reward potential. So we want to see bullish reversal patterns in this 21,500, 21,300 area. And then we have a nice juicy upside target just shy of 27,000. Uh, what have we got into the time? To, I'm just pushing the time limit here, so I'm going to wrap. Uh, I'm going to wrap this up here. I'll leave you with that uh, that Bitcoin idea. Uh, do we have any questions, uh, Benigo? Let's see. You have a question. Uh, please, can you analyze gold? Um, yep, just did. <laughs> that was helpful. Um, so to me, it looks constructive. What I was looking for, uh, Benigo, was this uh, corrective sequence. So we had this move here. We were looking for 1,800 on the downside. Came just shy. What did we get? 1,810. That's uh, that's close enough for government work. And so we are looking now for any pullbacks into 1,820, 1,830. Bullish reversal patterns there. And I'm going to be engaged on the long side. And we want to, uh, initial upside objective is going to be an 1,880, 1,890. Uh, I may not be continuing. No problem, Benigo. There's a um, there'll be a recording posted on the YouTube channel, so uh, so don't worry about that. Mario, you've also asked about gold. I think hopefully I've covered that. You know the levels I'm looking at now. Uh, I am getting constructive on gold. Obviously, we want to see the dollar index topping out to really uh, to really invigorate the gold trade. Um, Chris. Can you look at the 10 year bond? Yeah, I can. I've uh, let me pull that up for you, Chris. 10 year yields topping just over that 4% mark. So <clears throat> let me give you a view on that. Uh, a couple of things I want to do. I want to see where the 127 extension of that last swing is. That gives us 4.063%. And we have a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 swings. So that's uh, what I'd look for here. Ah, now do we have momentum divergence just? I would anticipate, Chris, at this stage, um, I would prefer the divergence to be a bit more pronounced uh, personally. But what I see developing here is a, a fifth wave extension up into this 4.063% area. And then from there, uh, I would look for a three wave corrective move. And what I'd look for in terms of that correction, Chris, and I'll, I'll draw it first, and then I'll show you what I'm looking at. Um, Again, I don't want to get into the weeds on, on Elliott Wave. I, I personally, I think about it as uh, simple structures. But what we have here is a one, two. This could potentially be our, our third wave here. Then I'd look for a fourth equal to two. So probably a little bit higher, actually. And then we'd look for a fifth equal to one. So let's just uh, do this. So something like this. And um, we overlay that with that, gives us five. So I'd be looking at this type of structure, Chris. So uh, let's say just shy of 4.1% uh, would be the uh, the objective. Now, what I'd look for here as well, Chris, is on this, this potential five, uh, we'd certainly want to see momentum divergence. And the, the good thing, the great information you can get from uh, from the momentum study is it, when this thing's breaking highs and we're trading into this potential target zone, what that's telling me is that there's a high probability that this is still, that we're in a third wave extension. So really don't want to get into the game of fading threes. What I prefer to do is buy a four and then try and sell into a fifth once we have potential momentum divergence developing. Does that make sense, Chris? Uh, Kiwi Yen. Yeah, let's take a look at that. I haven't had a look at that in a while. Kiwi Yen. 
Yeah, this uh, that's an ugly chart, but on the daily, let's pull that up. Yeah, not uh, not a great chart. I mean, to my mind, anyway, when I when I pull up a chart to analyze it, if I don't immediately see, if if I can't immediately recognize a pattern. That just tells me to shut the chart, shut the chart basically. But what I would say um, in a broad sense here is that um, we are trading, you know, simply in a range at the moment with the potential for that range, I guess, to turn into maybe a um, an ascending triangle type scenario. Uh, let's see. Let me just extend that and bring this here. Yeah, so there's the potential that you know we've got no, the, the, it's an, developing into a, a, an ascending triangle, which triangles generally tend to break with trends. So if uh, if we zoom out a little bit here, and we can see that we've been trading to the upside. So what you'd anticipate, or what I would anticipate certainly, is that we break to the upside. And if we do, my target would be that initially that one two seven extension ninety sixty nine. So any break through the 88 handle, that would be the first upside objective there, Chris, that I'd be looking at. Yeah, uh, yeah, potentially monthly flag. Yeah, same, same, same principle. Um, just looking at the slope of these uh, slightly higher lows here and these uh, this steady top <clears throat> for an extension for a, a triangle break. OK, guys, any other questions? No problem at all, Chris, you're very welcome. <clears throat> uh can't see any other questions coming through uh what i will do for those that are interested i will drop the tick mill uh facebook group the link i'm posting into the chat now uh, you just simply request access and you can get access there to that daily trade plan and uh, i post some other institutional research and interesting uh institutional insights and uh, last but not least, the trading view. So for those that want to follow along with the trade ideas on a daily basis, you can uh, you can follow them through the trading view account. Okay, guys, that's uh, that's a wrap for me. As always, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next week, thanks very much.